What's up, babe? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya. If this is your very first time here, so this video is going to be extremely informal, sis. As you can see, <laughs> I am right now just leaning on my little bar area where me and Amira eat breakfast. So I technically cannot sit down yet. I have like two or three more days before I can sit down. So <laughs> we're just going to keep this super, super informal. First of all, I just have to say thank you so much to all of my supporters and those of you guys who really, really love me. Um, I could tell that and I can feel that from all of the comments um, of support from my BBL vlog. So I wanna quickly say thank you so much for that. But you guys know that I'm not, first of all, let's just put it out there. You guys know me, like based on as much as you can know about a person through a screen, I feel like a majority of you guys know me, know my vibe, um, the kind of person that I am. Um, and so I'm just gonna leave it at this, but a couple of y'all deserve to be blocked. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it there because um, just some of the comments and some of the craziness that was going on in the comment section of the vlog was just uncalled for. And those of you who stuck up for me and said something, I love y'all, I appreciate y'all, y'all my riders, gang gang. <laughs> we just gonna leave it at that. Some of y'all probably should be blocked, but you know what? I don't think I care enough to go and find you and block you, so. Um, regardless, thank you to everyone who did support me on that video. A lot of you guys had a lot of questions, so I did separate the questions into four different sections so yeah we just about to sit back and talk about it give you guys all the answers to the questions that you have i feel a little weird doing the intro in this setting so we just gonna save that for wednesday <laughs> a lot of questions that i got were geared towards why did i get a bbl so um first and foremost i'm just gonna say because a lot of people were saying they didn't know what it was bbl stands for a Brazilian butt lift, but it is technically lipo and a fat transfer. So, so I did get 360 lipo, meaning that the doctor did take fat from my entire abdomen, my love handles, my back, and my entire back from the top all the way to the bottom. And I added my arms too. So it was my arms, my whole stomach, my whole back, my sides. I got a fat transfer, meaning that they took that fat and just put it somewhere else. <laughs> so Dr. Fisher inserted the fat into my hips and my butt just to create a more feminine figure. So the question, main question was why did I get a BBL? That was what I just explained was my reason. I am actually not one of the people that got a BBL to get a fat butt, to be twerking or to be, you know, cl for clout or for social media. To me, I didn't even do this for my career. Like I got a BBL specifically personally for me to achieve a more feminine look about my body, a more feminine vibe, hourglass shape, because that is not something that I was born with. So that is why I got a BBL. I didn't care about having a big old booty. I just wanted very natural. And when I say natural, meaning that it looks like I could have been born with this shape. Feminine vibe. And that's exactly what I got, which is why I chose the surgeon that I did. Or partially why. We'll get into that more later. What made me decide to go through this process? I've always had, you know, some body issues or some things that I didn't like about my body. As most women do, we have insecurities and everything like that. And throughout my 20s, I definitely was... Um, more on the side of doing the work mentally. Um, going to like the things that I could not change at that time, <laughs> cause I was pretty broke. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I feel like we tell people all the time, if you don't like something, change it. Typically we're talking about the gym. We're not talking about something that we might not, or some people don't agree with, which is surgery. And for me, I got to a point where I could afford this surgery to get that feminine vibe that I was looking for. So I did. The things that this surgery did for me, um, I could not have gotten in the gym. I have been in a time in my life where I was super, 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 super fit, um, working out, eating clean. In my most fit moments, barely no body fat and stuff like that, people would stop me in grocery stores and ask me, was I a swimmer? So that's the kind of body that I had. I had very broad shoulders, um, very wide broad shoulders, which I like, but everything else was super straight and up and down. <laughs> no curve whatsoever, sis, none. So, um, I don't care how many squats or how many lunges or whatever you do in the gym, you're not gonna get no curves if you ain't got no curves. <laughs> and that's just what it is. So, and then I also was not crazy about how that body type gained weight, so. Regardless, did no fat ever go to my hips and my butt, it stayed that way. And that was my reason, I wanted to be more feminine. I want to look more feminine in my clothing. I wanted to be um, happy with myself when nobody was in the room but me and Jesus. Had nothing to do with anybody else, my friends, my family, my man, 
nothing social media no i want to be happy with my body and how i look naked plus with clothes on when ain't nobody in the room but me and god so that is why i decided to go through this process how long have i been considering this and how did i research before making my final decision um i have been considering this for years i know it seems like having a bbl right now is like trendy or popular sis this is nothing new this ain't no new thing my doctor in particular has been doing it for 15 years i believe fisher don't get mad at me if that's not right but <laughs> I've been considering it for years because I felt like it was a good solution to the issues that I did have. But of course, it is expensive. I was gonna get this, get this in the general questions, but my whole BBL minus the arms was $8,000 plus my arms was another thousand dollars. So for just the procedure itself, I paid $9,000. For Dr. Fisher, that included, um, you know, my post-op care, my, my massages at his facility afterwards, like the first five, a lot of the, you know, my phones, my board, my first Faha, a lot of that was included. I'm getting too deep into the general questions. I really wanna keep these in like categories. So we'll get to the rest of that in a second. I've been researching it hard since I've been able to afford it, sis. <laughs> so once I was able to afford, afford it, cause I paid it off in November, um, I've been researching maybe since last summer when I started to look like I might have enough money to do this and make it a reality for myself. So I've been doing so much research, nothing that I've gone through, I wasn't aware that I was gonna go through healing so um yeah it hasn't been a surprise to me because I've done literally all of my research another question people were asking me was what did my boo think about my decision to get a BBL and first of all y'all don't know me and this dude are really still very much at the beginning of this situation <laughs> I just told y'all about this like two three video videos ago but regardless I say that to say it was mere weeks like after we started talking that I was about to have this surgery. So when I met him, this was gonna happen. <laughs> so when I told him about it, he was super, super supportive of me, extremely supportive. Y'all know he sent me flowers while I was down there. He got me this water bottle while I was down there. He has been really, really helpful to me because I actually told God, I was like, look, Lord, I'm a day after this is over. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not about to take no man through this. I ain't about to drag no dude through this healing process. I want to improve myself. This is part of my self-love journey. This is a part of me bettering myself and my glow-up journey specifically. And I want to start dating after I'm done healing. Um, but God was like, yeah, forget you and what you want. <laughs> and this guy came into my life beforehand and he has been there for me every moment, every step of the way. Um, the leaves is my body. I can do what I want. And if it's going to make me happier, then go for it. And yeah, he's been great. <laughs> Another question was people were asking me was did I pray about this decision? You guys know that I am a Christian woman and not just a Christian woman because I believe in God or Jesus. I am a Christian woman to the point where God is involved in my everyday life. I pray. I have my devotions. I seek God for my everyday decisions and life decisions. So yes, I did pray about this for sure. I prayed about this from the moment that I started considering it. Cause from experience, and you guys know this and things that I've talked about in the past, I'm the last one that's about to go against something that God is telling me not to do. Um, because I've been on the other end of that and it ain't fun. Cause I know that God sees the full story whereas I can just see a couple of pages or the page in front of me. So I prayed about the situation. I asked God, is this something that is okay for me to do? Every day, every night, I would pray about it leading up to it. It was one point where my labs actually came back a little bit off and I did you know, what I needed to do to get them right for the next week. But I asked, I was praying to God. I said, Lord, if this is not in my story or this is not something that you want me to do, please shut the door let them labs come back jacked up again and I ain't gonna do it because like I said I know God knows what where my life is going um if doing this would benefit me and what areas it would benefit me or not I pray hard about this situation and when I tell you that God opened literally every door for me to do this it gave me the okay to do this um even down to small details of my trip of my friends coming of my mom being able to come initially my mom wasn't gonna be able to come um just everything worked out for me and i know some people probably would feel like you know god wouldn't let you do that no let me tell you i have a relationship with god myself as we all should have individually and god let me know it was okay for me to do this so yeah it might not be for you 
maybe not, maybe so. <laughs> but he opened the door for me. And before I get into preparation, I'm just gonna lay it out real quick. <laughs> I was a little, little confused. Cause a lot of you, some of you guys were like, oh, I'm disappointed in you. Um, this shocked me. I can't believe you, you, you. And I'm like, I don't understand that because I feel like, I mean, that would imply that you have a preconceived notion or preconceived idea about me and who I am as a person that I would not get plastic surgery. Um, like I said a few minutes ago, y'all know, I am not the person that is doing anything for clout. I could care less. I could care less, sis. I could care less. You know, clout or social media or doing it because all these other influencers are doing it or doing it to look like a certain person or doing it to get more partnerships or doing it to, um, Whatever the case may be, y'all know I'm not that type of person. So um, maybe that's where that sh being shook and shocked came from. Or maybe because you guys know I'm a Christian woman that maybe you thought I wouldn't consider plastic surgery. I don't really know what that reason was. However, I just feel like it's a moment for me to be able to say, y'all know that people go through things that you don't know about. And me being an influencer, sharing my story and my life on a regular basis through social media, I felt like this is a part of my life. You know, I know y'all us are us used to seeing most of me right here and up, but I'm a woman and I have a whole body. <laughs> and it matters to me and I have my own insecurities and my own issues and I mean, I just, I don't know. Cause I'm just trying to rationalize why people were shocked, but I just say that to say, you know, I have my own insecurities. I'm a woman at the end of the day. Um, and it also sucks because people would expect influencers not to be real people and to have feelings. And it's really important to think about what you say before you say it and to consider the fact that though I am an influencer, though I am on the internet, yes, I have a lot of followers. That doesn't mean that I don't have insecurities. That doesn't mean I don't have a right to do something for me in my body, regardless of what other people are going to think and say. So, um, yeah, this is a reflection of something that I've been going through my whole life with myself, with my body, and this was a choice that I made, and I'm super happy about it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there because I just didn't understand people saying they were shocked. <laughs> Anyway, it does, this does not make me any different. I'm still the same Maya, always been the same Maya that you guys have been watching. Um, I still very much push, push towards self-love, loving on yourself, doing things for yourself. But for me, this was self-love for me. I decided to take myself out of the space, the negative space that I felt about my body and do something about it. No, maybe you think I should have been in the gym to fix that, but who are you to say that that was my only choice? I could afford to do this, so I did it. And for me, that was my self-love. I love myself enough to get myself out of that negative space that I felt about myself. And now I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just that's just what that's just what it is. So, um, we're going to nip that in the butt right there. Uh, the next part I want to talk about is preparation. People ask me a lot of questions about how did I prepare for this? And I don't know if I mentioned, but at the end, I am going to show you guys like my foams and stuff in the body because I will be three weeks in two days. So a little three week update. So preparation. Um, I got a few questions about preparation. Someone said, how did I prepare my body if I did do any preparation? Um, 30 days leading up to my surgery, I had to stop all vitamins, taking vitamins. I had to stop alcohol. Um, Y'all know I don't really drink like that, but I do drink my wine almost on a daily basis <laughs> so I had to stop that obviously no drugs I don't do no drugs I don't even smoke weed so um and you just couldn't take like different medications and stuff like that so um that was really all the preparation um I tried to eat extremely clean 30 days leading up to it and I actually was trying I mentioned in the vlog that I was trying to lose a little weight too. <laughs> because you know doctors say you should be more closer to your goal weight when you have this surgery so that you're not trying to lose weight afterwards I wanted to be a around 160 but I went in right at 175 and also I am 5'7". Yeah, I had actually been trying to lose weight on keto and that is what messed up my labs the first time. Cause you gotta get a full panel of blood work done within the 30 days prior to your surgery. So some of my levels came off 
wrong and when I looked on Google to see how to get them together it was a lot of stuff pointing towards not being on keto anymore <laughs> the whole grains fruits stuff like that so I was like okay let me get off keto let me eat completely like healthy and whole um all the food groups that kind of thing and it fixed my levels um, my levels came back cool, I was good, and that was that. Got cleared two weeks before, I did have to take a COVID test, a swab test, so I got that done, came back negative, obviously, and that was pretty much all of the preparation as far as my body was concerned. Uh, one thing about a BBL is you do have to have excess fat to get this done. I did see one comment in the vlog saying that it's laziness <laughs> getting a BBL, but that just shows the lack of research this person has done on this. Saying that everybody that they've seen begin a BBL had an unhealthy shape beforehand. Actually, you have to have fat in order to get a BBL. So you can't be like super duper 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 fit and get one because there ain't no fat to take to move it anywhere. So had I lost the weight and got down to 160, I probably would not have gotten the results that I got because he did take the maximum amount of fat from me, um, which was 4,000 cc's and he put almost 2,000 cc's in each one of my butt cheeks in my hips on each side so yeah you gotta have fat in order for it to happen so I didn't have to like lose a lot of weight or lose weight at all the only restriction is you do have to have a BMI of 32 or less to go to my doctor or 31 what made me choose Dr. Fisher Dr. Fisher is double board certified in plastic surgery um that means he is certified by both of the plastic surgery boards. He's super duper safe. Um, he's one of the, known to be one of the safest surgeons who specialize in doing BBLs in the United States. That was extremely important to me was my safety because I can't enjoy <laughs> my body afterwards if there's no afterwards and I die. You know what I'm saying? So um, safety was super important to me. Um, he also was just very kind. From everything I've seen of him online, he's done the bodies of some of the women that I watch here on YouTube, and I love their results, and it looks super natural. He has very, very natural results. That was super important to me. I did not want, y'all excuse me, I got all this stuff on me. <laughs> but I did not want a doctor who specialized in the vixen look. I didn't want a doctor who did not know how to sculpt out a woman's body. Um, I wanted to look supernatural. And that is why I chose Dr. Fisher. Um, I've done so much research on him. I know a lot about him. <laughs> and I just knew that was going to be my doctor. Um, he got the girls out here looking beautiful and gorgeous and feeling great about themselves. And I wanted some of that. So. Okay, so someone said, what are the most important products that I needed during my recovery? So this was preparation because I did have to buy everything before I went down to Miami. The list of things that I made sure that I had, some of the things I didn't even use, so I'm not gonna list any of that stuff. I knew that I needed doggy pads because I knew that I was going to be leaking from my research, so I got those off Amazon. Everything I'm about to list I actually got off Amazon. Bio oil for my skin to help my skin to stretch and to keep my skin moisturized. I bought a Tylenol because you can't take ibuprofen, so I bought Tylenol Extra Strength and Tylenol Extra Strength PM. I bought some loofahs on a stick because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to reach, so I got that. I got some flushable wipes, which I needed. <laughs> Because let's just say using the bathroom was not the easiest thing after this, in which I'm still low key struggling with. I bought some gauze pads, neosporin, some first aid type of stuff. I also bought a waist cincher because I knew that my stage one faja was going to start to get small, but I still needed to wear it. So I got a waist cincher so that I can make it tighter. I bought some surgical tape, which I bought the wrong kind, but that was needed as well to patch certain things up. I bought a shower curtain to go on the bed, the Airbnb, so I didn't ruin it. Um, I also bought like the hospital pads as well, which most of that stuff I did not need because I didn't leak that much, but some people do leak a lot. So you had to make sure you had all of that to protect the Airbnb bed. I brought my own sheets. Um, what else? That was really all I needed, y'all. I would have probably benefited from getting like an extender like the old people use where you pick stuff up off the floor, <laughs> squeeze the thing. Um, but I had people around me that could help me to pick things up, but that probably would come in handy if you're more by yourself doing this. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that I bought. I bought everything on Amazon, took it with me to Miami, unpacked it there, and that was it. I did also buy an air mattress that you guys saw um, on Amazon as well for the car, because I rented an SUV, just to be more comfortable 
uncomfortable going back and forth. So someone also asked what were the vitamins that I took 30 days before you could not take any vitamins. Um, but before that I was just taking normal like Vita Fusion or the woman's vitamins. Um, multivitamins. Once my labs came back weird, I did start taking a papaya root extract um, peel to help get one of my levels together. Um, but besides that, I didn't really take any other vitamins. So next, quickly, I'm just gonna talk about the healing process and some questions that people ask me. One of the biggest questions that I got was, what is the marble for? <laughs> the doctor mentioned my marble <coughs> um, in the video and then, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to take this off. I'm getting hot in front of this light. My doctor mentioned the marble um, while I was there and then I mentioned it later. So, y'all know I got a baby, right? <laughs> I, well, she ain't a baby no more, but my baby is 10. Uh, two weeks before she popped out, I thought I was in the clear, sis, was not. And two weeks before she came, I got stretch marks all over my stomach. So, <laughs> um, I have obviously stretch marks like all the way across my stomach. So I was afraid of loose skin um, after you have lipo. Now I've had a flat stomach since I've had Amira before, like when I was really fit and my skin retracted just fine. But I didn't know if that was gonna be a different story because of the lipo. Um, so, because I have some loose skin above my belly button, um, Dr. Fisher recommended that I put a marble inside of my belly button um, while while I'm wearing on my phones and my boards and stuff to help it to heal correctly. Cause had it not been in there, the skin that's on top of my belly button would have healed kind of like a U over my belly button. And it's possible that you wouldn't be able to see it or you know, like it would, he, it just would have been weird. So he gave me a marble so that my belly button would heal and look normal and the skin on top would be tracked to my body and not start to hang over my belly button. That is what the marble is for. I have it in right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it is helping. My skin is retracting really, really nicely. And I have no complaints about that. Um, I know my stretch marks aren't gonna go away. That's not a problem, you know. Someone asked me, can I take CBD products? You can after you're done. Um, a lot of girls I know from some of the Facebook groups that I'm in, use them and they help. I have actually not used CBD ever in my life. I did eat like one gummy after it was over. Um, and it helped me to calm down. It actually knocked me out. I wasn't crazy about how it made me feel. So I didn't use it since, but yes, you can use it after you're done getting your surgery. Um, someone asked about scars. You have multiple scars from the incisions. You have one that's in your back. I have one at the bottom of each of my arms since I did my arms. And then I have three, like one, one, two, three. Like right above my pubic area. And those are all lipo um, scars where they took fat out. And then I have inserting scars, like scars where they actually put it in. Um, I have two underneath my butt. And then I have two on my butt. So one here, one here. And then I have two underneath, so. And they're scars, so more than likely they'll always be there. Um, but of course I can use different things to try to minimize them. Another question was how do I use the bathroom and can you take a bath given that you have incisions? No, you cannot take a bath. I cannot get in a pool. None of that for, I want, think they said six weeks, um, just to give your body a chance to heal and close up completely um, and lower the risk of infection. Um, bathroom wise, I actually squat over the toilet. <laughs> So when I'm doing number one, I'm peeing, I just squat over the toilet and I use it. Um, I'm actually kind of still squatting as well for the other one, but I kind of hold on to the toilet while I'm there because it is still uncomfortable to sit down completely. So you just maneuver. Uh, it was a struggle the first couple of days. Needed the help of my mother and my friend to physically put me over the toilet. But after the first two days, you're good. Just squat. Someone asked me, can I sit and does it hurt to sit? Yes, it hurts to sit. Um, some people say it doesn't hurt, but for me, it hurts. It's just really uncomfortable, honestly. Cause it still feels like you just have something back there that's foreign, even though it's not foreign, it's your own fat. But you know, the body needs a second to get used to what's going on to really take the fat, connect blood vessels and stuff like that. So when I do sit, um, it's uncomfortable. Um, I can sit at three weeks post-op, so in two days, I can sit down. A lot of girls that I'm in contact with say just, you know, take your time sitting, sit for a few minutes at a time, don't just like sit all day, um, and eventually, you know, um, it'll feel normal. And that starts the softening up process of the butt, because the butt is not jiggly like a normal booty for the first few weeks. <laughs> In case you didn't know that, um, like I said, the body just needs a second to adjust and to accept what you have put there. They say that the sooner you start to sit, the faster it starts to get soft. 
So, someone asked what's my day-to-day -day like after having my BBL. So far, y'all, I've just been trying to get as much rest as possible. We are getting back to our normal schedule this Wednesday because I feel cool to film. It's just since I haven't been able to sit, which I have have to but I sit for my makeup videos. It was difficult. Um, I have worked a few times and did some stuff for some brands and I just did it on my knees uh, in my beauty room. So we'll make it work. That's only been a couple of times. I've been trying to really get some rest um, this week in particular. I had a lot going on. Um, I did have a reaction to my moxicillin I was taking. I had to take antibiotics for two weeks and once it was over, it broke your girl out in hives. So my whole face and my neck and my scalp was covered in hives, which is the reason why this video did not come out on Wednesday because I was jacked up in the face. <laughs> so I also was, you know, just wrapping my mind around the vlog and the response and stuff like that as well. But yeah besides that um day to day has been cool the biggest issue for me has just been uncomfortable having all of my phones and my boards and everything in that has been hard just getting comfortable walking around with it good thing i'm at home you know and anybody trying to be outside anyway <laughs> but it's been that's been the hardest for me getting comfortable with my bed sleeping with this but i just pretty much y'all been on the couch binge watching stuff i started all american which is really good and just trying to find other things to watch spending time with amira yeah just kind of giving myself a break for my body and i was getting a lot of fatigue at first i'm not really getting fatigued now but every day has been different but by the day it's getting more and more normal someone asked how long will it take for me to be fully healed they say you're not fully healed until your full result for six months but you feel normal the week of surgery you know your body doesn't feel sickly you don't feel in pain but you do have to wear these all this stuff for six weeks uh, mine might be more like four <laughs> your, it takes a long time for your lipo areas to heal that's really the bulk honestly, of the recovery. It hasn't much been about my butt and hips and besides the fact that I can't sit or lay on them, which I can't lay on for six weeks, I can't sit for three weeks. To be fully healed, they say six months, but honestly, I feel like I'm gonna be feeling super normal by six weeks. But, you know, don't quote me on that. We'll see when I get there. Someone asks, if you begin to work out, how will it affect your body shape? And if you lose weight, will you also lose that weight? Yes, when it comes to having a BBL, y'all, you are literally just moving fat from one area of your body to another area of your body this is a permanent change this is a permanent change you don't have to go back for no maintenance you know you don't have to go back and get another surgery to keep it going this is a permanent thing now if you want to look exactly how you want to look you probably should eat right you probably should work out you know what I'm saying you should probably do all of that stuff um, to keep the look that you want but yeah you can gain weight this is not a weight loss surgery like you will gain weight just like you gained weight before you will just gain weight in different areas from my understanding so it's my understanding that now i probably will gain most of my weight in my hips and butt versus before surgery all of my weight went to my back my arms my stomach and not to my booty whatsoever <laughs> so i think that you probably won't gain a whole lot um, in the areas that were lipoed, um, but you can still gain weight there. I feel like it's just not as prominent as it was before. Anybody who's had lipo, if I'm wrong on that, please correct me. But from what I've done research and people have told me that you will just gain weight as normal. It'll just be more proportion to the body that you just created for yourself. You can't start working out. Um, I think they said from completely like at six weeks as far as squats and stuff, but at three or four weeks, you can start doing, you know, minor like cardio or small things as well. All right, so now we have some general questions that you guys asked me about this. Someone asked, can you just do lipo and no BBL? Yes, you can. You can get lipo 360 and just get the fat taken out of your stomach, your back, um, your sides or whatever and don't get it transferred. You don't have to have a fat transfer. But the BBL is like the combination of the lipo and the fat transfer. Can you gain weight where you were lipo? Like I just said, yes, you can gain weight there, but I'm no medical expert, but from what I'm told, you just have less fat cells there. So it won't get like flabby and crazy if you don't go overboard like it was before, but you can still gain weight in that area. or just like expand and get bigger versus getting sloppy if you get sloppy when you, you know, gain weight, which I did. <laughs> what happens if you don't have enough fat to get the results you want? Are the results based on your body fat composition? Yes, 
Yes, yes, and yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it is definitely based on your body composition. That's why you'll see some people get BBLs and they don't look like other people. It might look crazy, might look square, because girl, if you're square before, it's gonna be a little square after. <laughs> Because you know they can't change your genetics, you know. So they can and they can only work with what it is that you got. You know that that just is what it is. But like I said at the beginning of the video, you do have to have some fat for them to transfer. So you are unable to get the result that you want to get anything transferred if you don't have fat. So those of us who might be more on the skinnier side and if you're looking to get some more curves you will probably have to gain weight for this surgery but when you talk to coordinators and people and let them know your information you know you answer questionnaires they'll let you know what you need to do for your body to be able to qualify for the surgery i did not have to gain any weight <laughs> i sent in my consultation pictures it was like yep girl you good <laughs> We can do this for you, uh, which I didn't know whether to be offended or happy. <laughs> but, you know, um, it does depend on your body. Can the fat transfer to the butt area dissolve after a certain period of time? No. Um, I believe in the first three weeks, you will lose like maybe 20 to 30% of it from what I'm told, just because your body just doesn't keep everything. Um, but after three weeks, what you got is what you got. That's what's staying. Um, it will not dissolve, it's fat. You're really just moving your fat around in your body. That's all it is. So once the body accepts it, you know, blood vessels connect, nerves reconnect, it gets soft like a regular butt, that's your fat. Now it's there. Um, it does not dissolve. How often should you get massages post-op? Um, for that first week, they say that you should get it every day. Um, after that, um, like twice a week, they recommend you get at least 10 massages outside of your surgery massages while you're in Miami. Um, right now, I'm getting mine twice a week. I've already had three since I've been home. I'm getting mine on Wednesdays and Saturdays right now, and I bought 10 of them. So that's about it. I don't think I'm gonna need more after that 10. They're not as painful as people think, say, but it also depends on your tolerance the reason that people say that they're painful is because your skin is very sensitive after lipo so like my sides are super duper tight like my skin and so it hurt a little bit when she's like pushing those sides so that would make sense but um it depends on how well you do with pain honestly and i guess i have a high tolerance for pain because they don't hurt me that bad do's and don'ts before and after surgery and onwards. I feel like I've kind of already gone through that, you know, no sitting for three weeks, no working out for six weeks, um, no laying on my back and my sides for six weeks, um, no drinking 30 days before, no drugs 30 days before, no, no other medications 30 days before. That's pretty much it, guys. That's really all the restrictions. It's not really any other restrictions. Um, I finally can have a little wine now that I'm done with my antibiotics. I haven't yet, because some girls say you swell up, and I don't want to swell up, because my swelling is almost gone. So Airbnb I stayed at, I will leave the link in the description box. So many of you guys wanted to know, um, the link is in the description box. What is the drain for? So the drain is for lipo. So so from what my understanding is it is when they take the fat um, out of your body your body in order to protect yourself <laughs> fills between your muscles and your body and your skin fluid to protect you and to protect that area because it's like wait a minute what you just take out of me you know that's that's how I explain it I don't know medically what's going on but that's what I feel like um so while you're in Miami they put drains in you to help to get that fluid out of the body since it's way more like present right after surgery and then it starts to calm down so the drain was to get all of that fluid from my stomach and everything it out of my body during that first week do you mind sharing the price I already did um the whole Thing was nine thousand dollars but I paid cash which for Dr. Fisher has to be paid completely 30 days before I paid mine off in November my February my surgery obviously was in February it was a lot of money to pay for everything else you know when you're talking flights Airbnb renting a car all the supplies I'm gonna say all of that was probably about going grocery shopping while you're there that too I'm gonna say all of that was another good four or five thousand dollars so i'm gonna say about 13 or fourteen thousand dollars i was out of completely for all of this but for me it was extremely worth it um extremely extremely worth it did dr fisher know that i did youtube um he actually did not know until i had a zoom meeting with him so the day of surgery how it works is that you get there you get undressed you do some more paperwork stuff like that you pee in a cup because they want to make sure you're not pregnant <laughs> um 
and I think they do a drug test that day as well. And then you sit and you have a Zoom meeting with Dr. Fisher before he comes in to like mark your body up and stuff like that and talk about what you want. So in our Zoom meeting, <laughs> he, um, I guess has a habit of asking people, what do you do for a living? And I told him I was an influencer. <laughs> and I don't think he believed me at first, <laughs> but he, um, he looked me up and stuff and that's when he found out, so. I thought that was pretty funny, but anyway, after that Zoom call with him, which y'all, if you are doing this, Dr. Fisher is like top tier. Definitely make sure you guys check out Dr. Fisher. He's amazing, he's funny, he just makes you feel super duper comfortable, him and his anesthesiologist. But um, once he came in to mark me up, um, I did a chance to ask him for exactly what I wanted in my body. So he told me realistically what he could do and what he could not do for my body as far as how my body is built bone bone structure wise and certain things. But I told him that I wanted a cute little slope booty. I didn't want no shelf. I want a nice little slope. I want it to be, you know, I want some projection, but my main concern was my shape. I wanted a good hourglass shape, um, but I wanted to look natural. I want to look like, you know, a normal woman who was shaped like this. He told me I already was set up for an hourglass shape, which I was happy about. But even though I was set up for that shape, my body, like my genetics did not allow me to have that shape. If that makes sense. So <laughs> you take fat out of the certain, out of the right places, I can have that shape is what he meant. So um, he gave me exactly what I wanted. Love, love, love Dr. Fisher. She recommended Recovery House or an Airbnb. I would recommend a Airbnb um, or a hotel. There's a lot of hotels around his office in particular. I obviously did not go to Recovery House, but I did experience the the heights of this type of surgery and the help you need. And you need to have someone there that loves you um, to help you. I would have someone there who loves you if you can help it. At least two people, honestly, for the first like three days. Two or three days. Cause you're extremely vulnerable. You're barely moving. Um, people are gonna have to see you naked, help you to shower, help you to use the bathroom, regardless of if it's number one or number two. Um, I would just prefer to have somebody who I love and who I trust. A husband, a significant other, a friend, um, a parent, that is what I would recommend. But I do know there are some great recovery homes who are providing exceptional care. So if you're okay with that, then sure. But me personally, I'm happy I have my family and my friends. Should someone get 360 lipo and BBL only after having kids? Um, or if you proceed with the surgery before having kids, would a pregnancy alter the results? No, I mean, I'm still on the fence of whether or not I'm having some more babies, but from what I'm told, it does not alter results. From my experience and what I've seen, it actually helps you to bounce back faster <laughs> and that you'll still have like a flat stomach afterwards and everything like that. But no, I don't think that you have to wait till after you have kids. I would say don't do it right before you have kids. You can enjoy, you know, enjoy it a little bit, but no. I don't think it would be a waste of money because I've seen women who have had BBLs and then had kids and they look the same after. Um, someone asked if you're an influencer, um, can you write this off on your taxes? No, no you cannot, I don't think so. <laughs> Cause it's part of your career. Cause I, it's not really part of your career. I mean it is, some girls make it seem like, oh yeah I did this for my career so I can get more money, uh, whatever. That kind of just happens as a result just because you feel more confident, you look might look better in clothes as brands would think you look better in clothes and you would get like partnerships and stuff but I don't think it's something that you probably can write off on your Texas. And I definitely don't plan on it because to me, I didn't make do this as a career move. Any regrets or anything I wish that I knew before surgery? Number one, I have zero regrets. I have zero regrets. I feel great about the decision that I made for me, for my body, for my self-esteem, for my view of myself. Um, I feel great. I have no regrets. I love what I see when I look in the mirror right now. I feel good about myself. Um, I feel good about my decision. My recovery has been smooth. I haven't had any issues and I'm praying that I still don't have any issues. I'm surrounded by friends and family that love me and support me and I have no regrets. <laughs> I don't even think there's anything I would say I wish I knew before having surgery because I did very extensive research before I made the decision and everything that I've gone through so far I knew was gonna happen. <laughs> and it's not, it hasn't been bad for me at all. I'm very happy. We're gonna go ahead and hop into the body, but before we do, um, again, I just wanna say thank you to everybody who supported me and is supporting me. 
Uh, I know I lost some people. I saw had some people who felt the need to let me know they're unsubscribing, which is cool. That's on you, that's fine, baby girl. Everyone has their own opinions and that's okay. I choose to share my life online and this is something that was extremely personal for me that I told you guys in that vlog and I'm saying it now. I knew it was going to unveil those of you guys who are really, really here for me regardless of if you agree or not with my decision that I made for me, for my body, with my money. And I love, I love my gang for that. I love y'all for that because that is what's most important to me. And I'm focusing, I'm choosing to focus on y'all and the positivity and those of you who love me, even the brands that have reached out to me and been supportive of me. Like that is what I'm choosing to focus on because it is a cause for congratulations because I did something <laughs> to improve myself and this is part of my self-love journey and it's all about loving on yourself regardless of what that looks like for each individual person. So yes, it's <laughs> I love y'all and we are going to go ahead and get to this body yaddy yaddy. Okay y'all, so first I was just gonna show you guys everything that I have inside of my Faja right here. So I have on a sports bra right now uh, with, under my hoodie, but um, I do wear an ad board right here. I am covered in four different foams, lipo foams, which is just protecting my skin that was lipoed. Then I have a triangle board that is right above my butt, which creates like that dip in the back. So this is how I'm looking walking around my house 24 seven. <laughs> this is a stage one Faja, so it is getting very loose. Like I can pull this and like put my entire arm inside of it. It is not as tight as it was after surgery because I am shrinking and my inches and just going down and everything like that, my swelling, all that jazz. So I did buy a stage two Faja from my massage therapist cause she sells um, Fajas. But girl, I don't, I'm a little paranoid. Dr. Fisher said after week of three, um, what you have is what you gonna have. So I've been waiting for the next couple of days to be three weeks to wear it because I feel like it compresses my hips. Um, maybe it probably doesn't, but I'm paranoid and I was like, I don't wanna lose them. So I'm gonna start wearing that one every day uh, within the next few days. But yeah, I do have a waist cincher that I wear and I pull it across to make this even tighter just to compress myself more because I know that the Faja is getting too big. I am going to just show you guys everything. I do have an arm garment as well as well that I do have to wear every day. I am going to go ahead and just take this off so you guys can see everything that is in here. And this is how it's looking on the inside. I have two foams here, one foam here, and then one in the back. And then I have my ad board, which is from Dr. Fisher's office that I wear right in front of my phone. I feel like my body looks super, super natural. I was told y'all I didn't want nothing crazy. I am still expecting my waist to go down a couple of inches. Right now I'm at 29 inches and around my hips and butt, I am a 44. I do know that it's gonna go down even more than that. I feel like I just look normal. <laughs> And that's what I wanted. Okay y'all, so here I am in this little mustard dress, which I believe is from Fashion Nova. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the shape. This is a three week update. I'll probably do another one at six weeks for you guys. But yes, baby, this is how we are looking. I definitely feel like I look better in person. You can really see like the shape and my butt is actually a little bigger than it looks on the camera. <laughs> Overall y'all, I am in love with what Dr. Fisher did. I love how natural my body is looking. Yeah, y'all, that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video and checking me out. From here on out, we are back to our regular scheduled programming. Um, uh, we're back into our makeup videos on Wednesday. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, love you guys that support me. Thank you for sticking with me through this journey and supporting my decision. Um, I'm so much happier. I'm so much more confident and that's all that matters. Gotta do you. So I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.